Hello, welcome back. As you can see, I've gone some way ahead with the chassis and all the bits and pieces that fix to the chassis basically. As you know, it's a hem, hemet, I don't know how you pronounce that, H E M T T, and it's, it's a trumpeter kit. They seem to have changed the kit. You may remember from the unboxing. Oops, that's not quite in film. You may remember from the unboxing that the, the box said it was 330 odd pieces, parts. Then there was a leaflet on the inside that said it was a new variant. And there were 600 and odd bits. The, bit, the, the count of the parts doesn't really matter. But what has happened is they've used some of the old variant and added new parts in to the, the, the new variant which causes a couple of little problems there's some very small sprues as I mentioned on the on the last video on the unboxing video there are also two sprues with the chassis rails for the tractor unit I thought they would be for the trailer but not for the tractor unit and there are several other small sprues that, that, that pop up here and there there's a lot of parts to it and most of it is, is simple enough to put together and as you can see I've done section one all the parts on section one which is basically the two chassis rails the members between them one of the power steering boxes a transfer box a couple of little bits and bats and the light bar at the lighting bar at the back that also has a couple of airlines a couple of palm couplings for the airlines on the end of it and that those two palm couplings are because this these chassis rails i don't think they came from an articulated unit i ca i think they came from a rigid vehicle built on the same on the same design but anyway, that's that's not the problem. Um, we'll come to that in a minute or two. On the the lighting bar at the back, you can see that I've drilled out both of the holes there, and then <clears throat> I have two cables, two wires. These are very thin, 0.5 millimeter wires, and there are four of them. One little LED light in there, and one in there, and the wires run. Yeah, you can see that clearly. All the way down inside the chassis members, all the way along here, all the way along until they get to underneath the cab, which is where the, the distribution board and the batteries are going to go, is underneath the cab. Because there's a big void here that's more than big enough to get all the bits and pieces in to, to wire it up. There are, I don't know if you, this will be any of any use to anybody. I had to join the cables there and turn them down into two, four cables into, into two. So I used shrink tubes as you would normally use. And as you can see, they, they look quite bulky. So I've positioned them in a place where they'll be underneath other things so you won't actually see them. But I wasn't happy with it anyway. So I did a little bit of research. <laughs> and came up with nail varnish and basically apparently nail varnish is an insulator so provided you're not going to move the cables or wires very much once you've made the joints paint them with nail varnish then let it dry and I've tried it on all sorts of things and it certainly does it insulates the wires more than enough so the, the two ends of those wires there if I were to oh, is that, 
can hear no focus that's better the two ends of the wires there as you can see they're very thin but once they're joined together and soldered if I were to paint them paint them then with a little bit of nail varnish then they're, they're safe I don't need to put the the shrink tubes on them the only thing is I've got to make sure my wife doesn't realize that I've pinched some of her nail varnish not that I'm scared of her and that's about where we're up to with the lighting when I do the rest of the the, uh, the body I'm not going to put or I'm, I might not put the, the the marker lights on the side and there are two working lights that go on the plat oh, they go at the back here on the platform here at the back so I'll take a look at that it might be might be more work than it's worth I will try to put the marker lights in the cab there are five marker lights in the cab and the God bless you three in the middle and the two marker lights one on either side plus the headlights on the front and the two orange markers on the front I'll try and get all of that in depends on how much space I've got to get the wiring in so that's all of that all of uh, stage one really very easy stage two is building up the bogies and as always there's loads of photographs with this building up the bogies as you can imagine is it, again it's really quite easy and putting them together and what I've done is put them that, that's one bogey the front bogey there and then the rear bogey is on the next page on section five so what I've done is I've gone as far as putting what would be in real life the 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 back of the shoes the back of the brake shoes on there so that the wheels find the front wheel the wheels will just sit on like so okay and that's about it I've gone uh, put all the bogies together what I've been what I'm trying to do is get the whole of the chassis together so that I can paint it without having to scrape any paint off to stick things back on again so both bogies as I say fairly easy to put together the brakes however the brake chambers here here and here and here on both sides are to say the least the instructions are a little bit ambig ambiguous you've got to put them where you think they'll fit and that's the best you can do with it so that's what I've done I've, I've gone from experience of driving vehicles like this and put the brake chambers where I think they would go the steering rods whoops the steering rods as you can see I've set the steering so that it's when I pose it it will be the wheels will be turned out and I, I think it looks a bit a little bit more more artistic shall we say to do that so I've set it and that in, indeed set me a problem so I've set the wheels so that they are turned to to the left and these tie rods these two go on quite easily from the power steering pump so the cylinders for the power steering the one across here join the two power steering cylinders together no problem but then when you start putting these two on because you've changed the the angle of the wheels they're a little bit short and you have to use a bit a little bit of jiggery pokery to to get them on you shouldn't do because in theory they would turn to any angle but I'm guessing it's because it's a plastic kit that uh, it didn't quite work out that way but we've got them on in the end what else yeah um, on the side here we've got the instructions for a second or two so that's a, uh, the front bogey then the rear bogey then it says to put the bogey fit the bogies to the the chassis again easy enough don't forget to put your two prop shafts in drive shaft as, as they're called in some parts of the world so the two prop shafts don't forget to put them in at the same time as you put the bogey in otherwise you'll be struggling to have the devil's own job to get them in once the bogies are glued on there shock absorbers went on easily enough there is a, an anomaly if you like 
This one here, it says C47 opposite C46. Now I read that, that C47 would go here and C46 would go here. The reality is, it's the exact other way around and I'm guessing it's because of the way uh, write, the people write in China. And as you can see, C46 goes up, comes up from the side of the chassis and, oh no, no, sorry, C46 comes up from the side of the chassis on the inside. It doesn't show that on the, on the diagram at all. It comes up from the inside, it comes up in a straight line, and then it fits onto, there's a little cutout in the axle there, in the, in the axle. So all the others go to the outside of the chassis except this one. The rest are simple enough. There's a little groove in the, in the end of the axle there, and a, the piece just slides into it. But that one, <laughs> if you do it the way it says on the instructions, you're going to be struggling for hours and you'll get nowhere. So this one fits in nice and easily onto the, onto the end of the axle. And C47 comes up on the inside and then fits onto the axle itself. So it comes from the inside, whereas all the others come from the outside. You can see them on the outside here and here. And here, it's clear that it's going on the outside on those but they don't tell you where that one goes. Again, cut a little air tank on it, that's no problem at all. I've not built any of the air cleaner or the mud guard, the mud wing, because that's not part of the chassis yet, and it just getting in the way of the painting. All these little bits I've put onto the, onto the chassis, the two torque bars there on the suspension, Really very easy to go on, where are they at the back? Really very easy to put on in there and in there. On the axle, there are two little lugs on the inside of that. Can you see that? Yeah, I think you can. Two little lugs on the inside of that bracket there, on both axles. And on the end of the bar is a loop with a hole in it. Brilliant idea. This is never going to move. So, you know, you're not going to have working suspension on this. But you won't be able to get that bar in with those two lugs on. So I simply cut them off, put the bar in, glued it. Job done. Go away. So that's that. The A-frame here for the, uh, the back of the engine. It's a rear engine mounting at the back there. And as a winch hydraulic pipes for the winch for the spare wheel that come into the into the engine housing I'm not sure how that works I'm guessing that it, it, it turns out in real life it turns out from there and moves to the side so that you can winch the wheel up and down I'll investigate that a little bit further because I'm curious a couple of little hook and eyes to put on there that's for lifting the whole thing up it has an engine in it now Again, it's it's a bit weird. On the the in, the, the instructions, um, the leaflet on inside the box, it says it's got a, de, uh, a Detroit straight six, 15 litre straight six in it, and <laughs> that's clearly a Detroit V8. It'll be a V71, I would imagine. Beautiful engine. I used to drive a truck with one in it, and. They didn't have an auto box in it, semi-auto box like this, so it's a manual box. And it's a very, very basic engine. So what I might do is when I build the engine up, I might put a diesel pump on it and some of the fuel lines, the injector lines, things like that, just to make it look a little more interesting. The rest of it, dead easy. Air tanks to put together. <coughs> and as I say, the, the winch for the spare wheel. We're getting there, we're nearly there now. These are tie rods for the steering, I've already mentioned. I've not put the wheels on yet because these wheels are glue, uh, aren't glued together. I've fastened them together with a bit of double sided tape. And basically, with a little bit of effort, you can pull them apart. You can see it coming apart there. And when I put a knife through the, the gap there, they'll come apart really very easily. The reason I've done that is everybody goes on about masking wheels out so that they can paint them 
when you've got the tyre on. Why on earth would you put the tyre on? Cocktail stick in the back there. Paint the whole thing so that you've got a really nice paint job on it. Then pull it apart. Put the back of the wheel onto the pin there. There's a little, there's a little cap goes over the top of it. And which one? I can't find which page it's on. There we go. Wheel assembly. So the wheel goes on, little cap goes on the end, and then the front of the wheel goes on. And that enables the wheel to rotate, so you don't need poly caps or anything. So once you've painted it, pull it apart, fix it to the vehicle, put the tyre on. Perfect job, isn't it? What's next? Right, this is where it gets a bit weird. As I say, we've put all these together without any trouble at all. Then it says repair, repair, repair and repair. Some of them were really quite easy to repair. Can you see that? Yeah, the one at the front, a little bit of putty in there, done. The two at the back, again a little bit of putty in there and they've gone away and a little bit of putty in that one and it's gone away. These two however in the middle, these two are really quite large holes and they go right through the, the, the chassis member. So obviously if you're going to fill it, it's going to, it's going to be a bit of a ball link. So what I decided to do, one of them, one of the holes goes behind these two, these two toolboxes. So there's no point whatsoever in, in making it go away. You can see it on the inside if you've looked extremely I don't think you can actually. No, I don't think you can. So that's gone away completely. But this one that's under he underneath here, I thought I know what I'll do. I'll fashion a plate out of a little bit of plastic, which is 0.5 mil styrene. And I cut four little rivet heads off it was a bar like this perhaps a bit smaller can you see that one of these conrods but perhaps a little bit smaller than that uh, about half a mil in diameter and just stuck them on when that's painted it will look as though it was meant to be there it won't make any difference at all i don't think so anyway but then again i wouldn't would i uh, so that's that's that those are the repairs that i've done on there and that's what makes me think that the, this this whole chassis was for something else was for another vehicle and I think there was something here, I think there was a hydraulic leg here for a crane maybe at the back that came off the back here. It would also explain if it was a wrecker why it's got two palm couplings at the back there. The rest of it is, is the cab, there's lots of the cab on there. We haven't done any of the cab. I put the spare wheel together in the same fashion so that I can paint it. Couple of little bits and pieces, steering rods, put the fuel tanks together, easy stuff. The PE there, I made a big mistake with that unfortunately. I bent it all round nice and neatly. And then I thought these two rails across the front here, I don't need to put that in a bender to bend it. And what it what's happened is I don't think you're gonna be able to see it on there, but it's deformed it because it's got a curve on it and it's not a sharp bend as it would have been in a bender. It's not only deformed this piece, it's deformed this piece as it glues on there. And I'm not going to take it off to, to repair that. I don't think it's worth it. So that's it, that's that piece of PE. And there's nothing else to be done on there just yet. Last page. Piece M16 and the piece in front of the skis here. On the front of the skis here. Uh, PE for the the top of the skis, the ramps some people call them, 
a little piece of PE on there and a toolbox that I've already mentioned that goes on the side here. So they're, they're, that's just those two pieces of PE really. With these ramps, a lot of British trucks, European trucks, don't have them anymore because they've got full air suspension. When you reverse under your trailer, so you're here and you're going to pull under your trailer, you lower the suspension down on the airbags, reverse under it so that the pin's just, ab uh, just above the fifth wheel, then lift it up again, then just give it a knock so it couples up. So you don't need the ramps anymore. And I guess it loses a bit of weight, so you can put a bit more payload on it. Simple as that, isn't it? And a curiosity, really. But these are older wagons. But a lot of the American vehicles, I see that they, they're still running on leaf springs, even on the front here uh, and on the back. It must be a rough, up, bouncy old ride. But anyway, so that's where I'm up to, and all of that has got to be painted yet. When it's painted, then I can forge ahead and get the, the, the mud guards done, the, um, put the tyres on, loads of stuff to go on there, and from there it's, it's building up the winch platform. There are no hydraulics in evidence on this, so I may or may not put some hydraulics in on it, but we'll see. And as you can see on this diagram here, there's quite a void underneath there and that's where the distribution board for the electrics and the batteries will go and it's all hidden then I'll hide a switch somewhere probably in the, in the engine cover somewhere and that's that, that's about what I'm up to any questions any comments please don't hesitate to leave them and it would be great if you could like and subscribe thanks very much, much for watching see you next time ta-ra